all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so yes today is my birthday thank you for all the wishes i got this very cute mug as well so john vias thank you very much for that um i got this from my wifey and a bunch of other cards and gifts and e cards and uh, uh messages here so thank you to everyone let's start our discussion i wanted to discuss so one of the uh, cool beans on twitter asked me to go over the the data published by australian bureau of statistics about the deaths from covid-19 i believe till the end of january 2022 so significant data very interesting data let me give you a quick overview of a, of what struck me when i was reading it number 1 they had looked at data in two ways one is um death rate or deaths due to covid or from covid or because of covid and then deaths with covid and that is the person has covid but there is some other disease that is killing them and they have covid as well but the covid is not the primary contribution contributor and so they have separate them that's one that struck me that they did that neat thing of separating them secondly victoria had the highest maybe more than 60% of the deaths occurred in victoria so i'm not very much uh, aware of australia's geography but looks like about 25.5 million people and victoria has about 6 million or more still more than 60% deaths were in victoria then higher age of course as has been this uh, pattern for other cases other countries as well higher ages were more uh, prone to dying then poor socio economic stratum that was three times more prone to dying compared to richer uh, or people with more advantage then middle eastern people who were born overseas from australia's point of view they had a higher death rate compared to people who were born in australia except uk and ireland so i think uk and ireland was 2.1 per 100000 i believe australia was 2.3 per 100000 and middle east was near 9 or more more then the comorbidities and my apologies i had taken my nasal spray for allergies so i am still congested with that spray so uh the comorbidities they had once again had them in two groups those comorbidities in the presence of whom covid would cause more deadly outcomes and then those comorbidities that were just basic diseases and then covid was present with them for example terminal cancers in the comorbidities the ones that were the most at risk for dying with covid or from covid were uh, cardio car- cardiovascular system issues then dementia and alzheimer and then others for example cancers and diabetes of course with the uh, covid itself the most common way of killing by the covid was pneumonia or respiratory failure so this is what i remember from when i was preparing it let's look at this data together it is actually fascinating data So I have no disclosure. This is um, Omicron time. Today there is a news of BA two being even more fatal than BA one, more towards Delta. So I'm going to try to prepare that after this one, and maybe late at night we'll discuss it. So medical disclaimer: this is not a medical advice. So here is the. Let me show you that. paper as well so this is the australian bureau of statistics and this is what what they've released 15 feb so it is quite uh, latest 
and this is data up till 31 January 2022. So beginning of the pandemic till 31st January. Key statistics, their own summary is the following. 2,639 deaths of people with or from. So they do separate people who died with COVID or people who died from COVID. The majority, majority of the deaths had an underlying cause of death or with COVID-19. So 2,556 folks had COVID-19 plus some comorbidity. But they were primarily COVID-19. 83 people who died with COVID-19. So they were not dying because of COVID-19, but they had some other disease and COVID-19 was present in them. The other one, the, the bullet point above, is everybody dying due to COVID-19. Chronic cardiac conditions were the most common pre-existing chronic conditions for those who had COVID-19 certified as the underlying cause of death. So total deaths in this time in Australia regardless of the cause, so this is all cause mortality, that was 273,901. Out of all of them, COVID-related deaths, and that could be COVID with or COVID from, these were 1%. So out of all the deaths during this time, from the beginning of the pandemic till the 31st of January, 273,901 people died and 1% were COVID. Population, 25.5 million. Population of Victoria, 6.64 million. However, most deaths occurred there. So 1,557 deaths out of 2,556 total. Now, with or from, due to COVID, 2,556. 20 from long COVID, this is what struck me. 20 patients out of all of these cases were those who had long COVID. So they had COVID, then the COVID outcome continued. My suspicion is, and I didn't have this data there, my suspicion is that they are not COVID, long COVID, as we've been saying, neurological symptoms or other. This seems to be somebody with the lungs damage, with just or cardiovascular damage, which they could not sustain their life further. But anyways, 20 people with long COVID, that's how they defined them, long COVID. Now, other deaths that had COVID-19 on the death certificate. So other deaths mean the person died of something else. However, because they were in the hospital, because they were tested, they had COVID-19 as well. So it was written on their certificate that the person had COVID-19 too. But the cause of death was not COVID-19. So this is why these were, these were other deaths. So 83 such cases were persons dying with COVID, but COVID was not the underlying cause. 13 deaths in people who were COVID recovered. So they were COVID positive at some point, became ill with COVID, then they recovered, and then they died as well. So their chart said had COVID or had recovered from COVID. Pamela says, why the fear with these numbers? I don't know, I'm presenting the numbers. Okay, so continuing. So registered deaths by age and sex. This is very interesting. Look at this. Zero to 39 years of age, the deaths were really low, for even 40 to 49. And then 50 onwards, my age bracket. <laughs> Happy birthday to Mubeen. So from 50 onwards, if you see the death rate, both in men and women, slowly starts climbing up. The WHO defines the underlying cause of death has the disease or condition that initiated the train of morbid events leading to death. So they are actually really great in separating it out to say 
caused by COVID death or death occurred but COVID was present as well. So here the, the definition, I thought this was interesting and I put that here as well. Disease and conditions reported on the MCCD. MCCD is their medical certificate of cause of death that are not the underlying cause of death are referred to as associated. So this 1,732 patients of 2,556 had disease progression. So of course, we're talking about people who passed away. So they had the disease progression in them. So 1,732. Now, what was the disease progression? And I think it kind of makes sense that pneumonia and respiratory failures were the top. So lung damage and respiratory failure is lung damage as well. These were the top, but with COVID, when somebody was suffering, it is possible they developed secondary infections. They developed renal complications. Remember that one issue with COVID management is that the lungs start filling with the fluids, congestion occurs. And this is where Omicron is fortunately a little more merciful to us. So when the congestion starts occurring, the doctor's um, management challenge becomes that they have to reduce the body fluids so that they do not accumulate in the lungs. But when they reduce the body fluids, then the, re the kidney stops or become damaged because kidney needs ample fluid to pass through them so that they can function correctly. And if we have less fluids passing through the kidney, then the substances would start crystallizing in there and the kidneys would start becoming jammed up and they would start failing. So now the doctor has to figure out how much fluid to give so that kidneys can continue to work and then how much not to give so that the person that doesn't drown in their own uh, lungs, uh, fluid in the lungs. So uh, renal complications, kidney complications, cardiac complications or heart failures or heart attacks, other organ failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, del deliriums and so on. So this is the progression of the disease. Now, 1,776, about 69.5% of all had pre-existing chronic condition. This is very important. 70% of the people who died had some chronic condition, which I had been saying it from the very beginning of the pandemic, that if somebody has a chronic conditions, just be a little more uh, careful, uh, try to control that as much as you can, and be just, just practice more care. So 35.8% of these patients had chronic cardiac condition. I believe 30% had dementia and Alzheimer's and about 20% had diabetes. Oh, here, here are the numbers. I remembered them off the top of my head. So look at this. Chronic cardiac conditions, 35.8%. Dementia, 31.3%. Diabetes, 20.6%. Chronic respiratory conditions, they already had them, 16.8%. Hypertension, 14.2% cancer 14.1, chronic kidney diseases 11.8, musculoskeletal disorders 4.3, obesity for them in Australia 3.6%. For us in the US, obesity is one of the top. And then Parkinson's disease 3.5. So the most important is chronic cardiac conditions. And fortunately, it is relatively easy to support cardiac system if you are not yet in you, a patient, is not yet in crisis. So my request to everyone is that take care of your cardiac conditions, if there is any, and just make sure that you are you have them under control, as much as you can have under control. Now, country of birth, that is very interesting. 2.1 per 100,000 deaths, UK and Ireland born. 2.3 per 100,000 born in Australia. 6.8 overseas, and this, I was actually saying 9, 29.3 per 100,000 deaths while being in Australia were those who were born in Middle East. Socioeconomic status. 
most disadvantaged died three times more than least disadvantaged. So I'll show you on their website, they have five tiers of socioeconomic stratum. And the tier five, the most disadvantaged, they were three times, they were dying with three times more numbers compared to the, the least disadvantaged of the tier one. So 35.7% males out of all those who died and, th and 38% females of all the females who died were poor or in, uh, in the stratum five. 9.5% males and 8.2% females who died were in stratum one. This is how much the difference was. So then they, John Snyder, thank you very much. I'll take that as a happy birthday. There are, <laughs> there are so many super stickers. So thank you very much. I am just going through this. So thank you, everyone. Uh, dying with COVID. A COVID-19 related death is one where there is disease or injury pathway to death that is not directly caused by the virus. So they actually uh, define it to say caused by COVID virus or died with COVID or with SARS-CoV-2, but not because of the COVID. So a COVID-19 related death is one where there is a disease or injury pathway to death that is not directly caused by the virus. For example, a person may have late stage cancer that has metastasized extensively causing organ damage leading to the, that death. And now that person may have COVID as well. So dying with COVID in these numbers, there were 83. Cancer was the most common. So cancer, number of deaths were 32, proportion was 38.6. Then circulatory system diseases, dementia, falls, other conditions. So this is the uh, discussion. I want to quickly go over the site as well. This is the same data, so I will not spend too much time. But I just want to familiarize you with this. So here, deaths, the total counts, we discuss them. Then certification that they, they're mentioning that doctors certify. And look at this, 20 deaths that were due to long-term effects of COVID-19, for example, long COVID. Then 83 deaths with, were COVID-19 related. This is where the person died with COVID-19, confirmed or suspected, but it was not the underlying cause of death. 13 deaths which occurred in people who had COVID-19 but recovered. These mentions of COVID-19 on the death certificates are captured with an ICD-10 code of personal history of COVID-19. So then they, are, they have even given the codes as well. Very thorough. Deaths due to COVID-19 year and month. So this was also very interesting, which I did not present in my presentation. And they, the reason, so this is, during a year, what times are people dying more? And they have shown the, the, they've speculated the cause. They said it's the surges. So when the surges come, so if you see here, 2020, January, February, March, and if you see the deaths started increasing from March, April, then May, June, low, then July, August, September, higher. But look at the next year. Look at the next year, September, October, November, December of last year, high number of deaths. And then 2022, January, this January, 422. And they say that is because of the Delta and then Omicron surges. Then is the age and sex. So here we saw this, that for example, 0 to 39 years of age, males, 15 deaths. And 0 to 39, females, 10 deaths. So similarly, they have the rest of the data here. Then state of registration. And if you see here, Victoria had the highest number of deaths. Causes of death. So they have gone over that as well. And I showed you those two. So here are those pneumonia and respiratory failure. We went over it. This is the 
uh, underlying comorbidities or pre-existing diseases. We saw this one too, chronic diseases. Then country of birth, and they have gone over Australia, overseas, and various countries there as well. Then deaths due to socioeconomic status. And if you see here, five is the highest, um, and the one is the lowest. And here are the difference between them. So people living in the least disadvantaged area, least disadvantage is five. So there, the number of deaths are in female and males, 9.5 or 8.2 versus people who are living at the tier one, which is the most disadvantaged area. And if you see here, the 35.7 in men, 38 in women. Then the death, COVID-19 related deaths, dying with COVID-19, not from COVID-19. And we looked at that. So this is the data. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for being with me. Next talk is going to be interesting. I'm going to talk about ivermectin's later study. That study basically shows that there is no efficacy of ivermectin. I'm going to put that data in front of you. So uh, I know that with YouTube, I cannot comment on certain parts to say that these parts are interesting. So you'll have to read between some of my lines when I'm discussing uh, ventilation and death rates. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Please like, subscribe and, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. I have a special link from, I think, day before yesterday, where there is a discount for Dr. Bean. So you can use that, or you can buy me a coffee, or PayPal, or you can be a patron. Thank you very much, and I would see you in another few minutes. Bye.